Recently, we took a look at the Minis Forum HM90 Ryzen 9 Mini PC. It was a fairly capable little PC, but it came with a bit of a hefty cost. Now, today we're going to be quickly looking at the new version Desk Mini UM350. Now, bare bones price on this one are currently listed at $269 but they also sell multiple configurations with RAM and storage already installed, with prices ranging up to just under $400 for a complete system. So Minis Forum sent me this pre-built version for purpose of review. This unit has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. The UM350 comes with an AMD Ryzen 3550H CPU with Radeon Vega 8 graphics has two SODIMM slots for RAM and an M2 2280 slot for an SSD. You can also add a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive with the included adapter. The system has dual band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and we also have three video output ports, an HDMI, display port, and USB-C, all capable of up to 4K 60 Hertz resolutions. The pre-built version of this system comes with Windows 10 Pro pre-installed, ready to go. Now the PC, after unboxing it, handling it, does have a decent build quality. The housing is mostly plastics, but it feels good. You also have easy access to the motherboard with the press-in and pop-up case, allowing you to access the RAM and SSD easily. So the PC also has a fairly silent 25 watt fan on the underside of the case. From my testing, I really didn't hear the fan at all. So pretty good. Performance wise with this thing, you're dealing with a couple year old mobile processor with integrated graphics. So you, you can expect some fairly low graphics setting gaming with newer games anyway. But even then, you know, some more, you know, resource heavy games will struggle with this chipset, even at, you know, some lower settings. With the lower power here, I was still impressed with a few games, but you got to have your expectations in check. That's kind of what the point of this video is, in my opinion, anyway. So I wanted to test some PC games and some emulation, see what to do, how everything looks and performs. You know, the whole package here. You know, I probably already showed the whole unboxing already, but it came with everything you need. The adapter for a hard drive if you want to use it. A, you know, mounting system to mount it behind a monitor, whatever you want to do. Power cable, and you got all the video output cables. So nice little package here. But onto the game. So, you know, they, they do kind of give you some information on their website of what to expect. And... For my testing, it is fairly accurate, the diagrams that they have shared. Uh, the games I tested though, I wanted to test some newer stuff, uh, maybe a little bit of older stuff as well, but with the, the PC game Forza Horizon 5, uh, this is one that ran fairly well with the uh, previous Minis Forum PC that I tested. Uh, but with this one, you know, it is a little less powerful. I did have to crank everything to the lowest settings possible for the game to feel somewhat playable. At high graphics, Forza was chugging along at a non-steady 15 FPS, so not really playable in my opinion. At medium settings, I was getting 20 to 25, and at low settings, I was getting 25 to 30. At very low settings, I was getting a fairly consistent 30 to 35, with it being more consistent at that 30 range, not really dipping below. You know, this is definitely not the best way to play the game, but it's fairly playable at these settings, in my opinion. Now, moving on to another game, a little bit older one, Doom Eternal. Uh, this one needed to be cranked down to low to get some acceptable performance out of the game. Um, but at the low settings, the game stayed fairly steady at 30 FPS, and it still looked really good, in my opinion. I mean, I'm amazed with this game, how well it plays on, you know, fairly lower end PCs. And here, yeah, it's playable. Now, moving on to Halo Infinite, this also needed to be set to low. Uh, while I felt the game was playable in campaign mode for the most part, uh, we were getting slightly under 30 FPS. Like, I wasn't really getting any kind of consistency with it staying at or above 30. It was always around like 26 or so. Um, I'm definitely not saying 
any of these games are going to be like enjoyable for everyone to play on a system like this. But, you know, I wanted to test some fairly newer games and, you know, a little bit older to kind of give an idea of what this CPU GPU configuration is capable of. Obviously, older, less demanding games, you'll have a lot smoother time playing, but it is fairly impressive with some of this newer stuff with how well this system performs. I mean, you may want this system for other reasons and it's just kind of a bonus the performance that you get out of some stuff on it right now emulation's also something of interest with these types of mini pcs i see a lot of people out there wanting to have something like this set up and you know with this particular configuration uh, it'll perform fairly well up to wii and gamecube um, but even then some games i tested struggled a bit but you know, you can always optimize, uh, you know, for better performance. I wound up tweaking some things here and there. And some games that just weren't playable at all became playable. So it's just one of those things, you know, you gotta, you gotta screw around a little bit to get the best out of it. But, you know, with Wii and GameCube, uh, for the most part, everything was running fine. Uh, testing out anything beyond that really is extremely hit and miss. Uh, you know, PS2, you might find some stuff that plays well other stuff that doesn't and you know wii u is just kind of like not happening for me with this system but anything up the wii and gamecube you should be able to play all right i mean everything out dreamcast playstation one obviously all your 8 and 16 bit stuff can play on practically anything that's going to be no different here so decent little system if you're looking for something like this but would I recommend it as a dedicated gaming setup? Probably not. Um, for the lower price point, it could be something that some people will get some use out of, maybe as a, a streaming setup, or, you know, watching video and whatnot, which this does do a decent job with. It doesn't really have any issues with video playing. Um, I just want to mainly focus on gaming with this video to give you guys an idea of what we're looking at. So, yeah, I mean, for the price, it's okay, but I mean, I, I think I, I really like the other one uh, that I reviewed prior, the HM90, quite a bit more just because it, it was quite a bit more powerful than this one, but it also is quite a bit more expensive than this system as well. So, you know, with power comes price, and that's the way it is. Like I said, wouldn't recommend this as a, the, a dedicated gaming system, but some people may get some use out of it. So I just wanted to share my thoughts and testing with you guys. Really do appreciate it. Catch you guys in the next one. Bye.